Welcome to my channel. For this tutorial, these are the supplies you've been needing. I forgot to add my zipper here, so you also need a zipper for this blouse. Now let's jump right into it. I will be using my Fusque bodice pattern to draft this blouse. This is the back and this is the front. On the front pattern, I already drew out my bust radius, which is the circle you see around the bust point. Although I haven't drawn out the waist dart, I have the dart width allowance included on this bodice pattern. So now to draw the waist dart, I'm going to come down from the bust point one and a half inches. Now from this point, I'm going to square down a line straight down to the hip line, making sure it's on a 90 degree angle. I haven't done this on both sides of the vertical line on the waistline. I'm going to mark a dart width of one and quarter inches and mark that same amount under the circle on both sides of the vertical line. I'm going to connect these points together to form my darts. Now the waist dart I'm going to be extending straight down to the hip line. Extending the waist dart to the hip line is going to eliminate that annoying bulge you get on the front part of your skirt or your dress, okay? From the tip of the shoulder, I'm going to mark down my desired blouse length of 24 inches. Marking the same length from the waist line downward is 6 inches. Now from this point, I'm going to use my set square and square in a horizontal line to the end of the dart like so. Because I'm going for a curved M line, I'm going to mark down 4 inches from this point and then using my set square, I'm just going to draw in a horizontal line which is going to serve as a guideline. Now using my curved ruler, I'm connect these two points together to form the curved M line. I haven't done this, I'm going to be copying this exact curved M line on my back pattern piece because I would like my back pattern piece to have the same cut as the front on the M line. Now I'm going to come down from the second, the second dart leg half of an inch, then using my curve ruler, I'm going to connect this point to the arm all like so. Now I'm going to erase my previous MO. Now placing my set square on the center front to meet the second darts, I'm going to draw in a short horizontal line which is going to be a guide for me to be able to take my upper bust measurement. Now from the center front, I'm going to take from this point to the first dart leg and then from the second dart leg to the side seam. So I haven't done this, I got an excess of one and a half inches which I must take out as a dart on this point. Now from this point, I'm going to mark in one inch. And then the remaining half of an inch, I'm going to mark in from the side seam. So I'm going to be taking that out of the bodies. All right, I've marked this. I'm going to take my curve ruler and draw out the new darts. So this is going to form the bust here on 
this pattern. So I'm going to carefully blend these darts just to make sure I get a smooth transition. Now I'm going to fold this point of the darts. That means the first leg of the dart to meet the new darts. And then I'm going to mark the point where the first dart leg meets the new darts. And then I'm going to take note of that point. Now on the neckline, I'm going to mark in quarter of an inch, making sure it's on a 90 degree angle. And then using my set square, I'm going to draw the triangular shape from the neckline to this point on the dart. And here I have formed the triangular shape, so I'll go ahead and cut out the part we won't be needing. So I'm just going to fold just to make sure the every part of the body is blend before I cut and then I'll go ahead and cut out the pattern. So after cutting the dart, you can see this part of the busty does not have that realistic curve. So in order to correct this, I'm going to tape in a piece of paper and then come out from the bust point quarter of an inch and taking my curve ruler, I'm going to blend from the top of the circle and blend into the under bust area of the bust here like so. And having done this, we now have a smooth transition on the cup area. So I'll just go ahead and cut out this, the excess piece of paper and yeah. So to finish the front pattern piece, remember I took out half of an inch on the side seam when I was contouring the upper bust area. So now I'm going to cut out that part and we're done with the front. On the back piece, I'm going to draw out my curved M line like we did on the front piece. The process is exactly the same. Now on the waistline, I still have a, a half inch dart allowance, which I'm going to be taking on the center back. So from the center back, I'm going to mark half of an inch, and then I'm going to connect this point down to the hip line like so to create a dart so the reason i have this half inch dart is because the difference between my waist and the hip is more than 10 inches now to determine how deep i want my my bustier to be at the back i came down two inches from my bust line okay so it's two inches from the bust line if you measuring from the top so now I'm going to connect from the side seam using my curve ruler to this point on the center back. Now I'm going to take the, my back upper bust measurement on this curve line. So I'll take from the side seam to the first dart leg and then from the second dart leg, I'll continue until I get to the center back. So after doing this, I got an excess of one and a half inches on my back pattern piece. So I need to take this off as dart. Now from the center back, I'm going to mark in half of an inch. And then this point, I'm going to connect to the waist dart like so. So I haven't done this, I still have one inch so on both side of the dart leg i'm going to mark quarter of an inch so together is half of an inch okay so i connect this to the dart now the remaining half inch i'm going to mark that in from the side seam now bringing my front pattern piece the side of my front i'm going to use it to trace the back like so
So right now, I am going to close the dart. It's important to do this. And as you can notice, after closing the dart, you can see the curved line here is not smooth. So I'm going to redraw this curved line. But before then, I'm bringing in my front pattern just to make sure it matches. And then I will redraw the curved line. And guys, we're done with the back pattern. So I'm just going to add my zip allowance, as you can see me doing. And then we're going to cut out this piece. So you can leave this like so, or you can cut out the dart. For this, I'm going to be cutting out the dart. And we're done. To drop the turtleneck collar band, I am going to draw a rectangle. The length of the rectangle is going to be four inches. Okay, I'm going to just mark four inches. Then the width of the rectangle is going to be my next circumference divided by two, which is 14 divided by two. And then I am going to add an extra one inch allowance to the seven inches to make it eight inches. So the total dimension of my rectangle is four inches by eight inches okay so now that i have my rectangle i'm going to take my fabric and then take the pattern piece and fold it into two like so and then take my fabric and fold it along the bias screen and then fold it again like so now taking my pattern piece i'm going to place it along the folded area like so and then cut out the turtleneck band so this turtleneck band i'm going to iron uh, interfacing on it just to make it you know thicker so right now i've cut my pattern on fabric on the fabric pieces, I added interfacing just to thicken the fabric. And also I used add wording on the bust area of the bustier. And I also cut separate lining for them. I'll be sewing the lining separately and the fabric piece separately. And then I'm going to join them together after sewing. So after sewing the lining and the fabric piece together i'll then join the turtleneck band to the bustier so right now just take this to the sewing machine and join the pieces together and i'll come back to show you what i'm going to do with the collar piece all right here is how the blouse is looking after joining the front pieces together now i'm going to attach the back piece to each side of the front and then fix the zipper and then attach the lining after fixing the zipper so this is what i have after installing my lining and the zipper and this is the opening where i turned in the wrong side into the blouse now i'm going to top stitch that part just to close that up and we're almost done with making this blouse so the next step for me is to fix in the buttons on this part of the blouse. So this button is going to serve as decorative purpose as well as hold my shoulder band. Now moving to the collar band, I already sewn my collar and I attached my button loops already, as you can see. Then I am going to take the collar and mark the midpoint of the collar like so. Now for the opening, I'm going to tuck in the seam allowance into the collar and then I'm going to top stitch on it nicely just to close that up. I'll also go ahead and add my buttons to the edge as well. So next we're going to move to placing the beads to attach the blouse and the collar together. So it's the beads that separates the collar from the blouse. By the way, I'm not a professional beater. This will be my second time doing this. And the last time it's really, really far off. So I'm going to do my best 
and figure out how to do this, okay? So I started by sewing one bead nicely in place. So I'm sewing the bead as close to the tip of the blouse, okay? So once that is sewn nicely in place and firmly in place, I'm going to take a second bead and do the same thing like I did with the first one. So once this is done, I'm going to take two beads at a time and layer it on the first beads. So I take two beads and went through the whole of the previous beads and come out through the second bead and back upwards to the top beads. And I repeat the same process until I get to the desired length of the beads. By the way, the length of the beads that connects the collar to the blouse is about one inch long. I would advise don't go anything more than this okay so when i get to the last part of the beads i make sure i laid the last two beads on the fabric on the edge of my collar like so so this is going to make sure the beads the collar and the blast is firmly held together so it's not just thread but instead, I'm going through the edge of the collar while I lay the two last beads on the edge of the collar like so. And once this is done, I'm going to take my thread and pass through the top of the beads to the very last bead and knot that in place. And after doing this, it came out nice and pretty. I love it. Yes, I made it. And yeah, guys, this is the finished look. And to spice up this blouse, I decided to add a shoulder band. So this is a very quick illustration on how I drafted the shoulder band pattern. When cutting this pattern on fabric, I cut along the cross grain, but I'm sure you can also cut these along the grain line of your fabric. So after cutting the shoulder band on fabric, I added fusible interfacing just to stiffen it up and I also added loops on the top part of both ends of the band. So this band should go around your shoulder to the buttons like so. And if you notice, I changed the color of my buttons to match the color of my beads. Now I'm going to take the loop on the band and take the belt to the other side and this is what we have this beautiful triangular otter neck blouse well i do hope you find this tutorial helpful i know it's a bit long i hope it wasn't boring well i did my best to explain um if you enjoyed this tutorial remember to leave a comment like this video and subscribe to my channel i would really love it Thank you again for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.